Think about the last thing you ate or drank. If it was anything other than water or milk or a fruit or vegetable, there's a chance that it could have contained high fructose corn syrup. What is high fructose corn syrup? The big behemoth of corn-based food sweeteners works exactly how you think it might. Think of it in terms of drinking coffee or lemonade. When you have something bitter or sour, oftentimes a sweetener, typically sugar in these cases, is added. High fructose corn syrup, often abbreviated as HFCS, is similarly considered a sweetener, often cropping up in many cheaply produced processed foods. It was first produced in 1957 by Richard O. Marshall and Earl R. Cooey after they created an enzyme known as glucose isomerase. This enzyme rearranged the composition of glucose in corn syrup, making it into fructose. High fructose corn syrup was rapidly introduced to many processed foods and soft drinks in the United States from about 1975 to 1985. The original high fructose corn syrup was known as HFCS42, containing 42% fructose. Then, using an ion exchange column designed to retain more of the fructose component, they made HFCS90, containing 90% fructose. HFCS90 is made to mix with HFCS42 to create a third type of high fructose corn syrup, HFCS55, containing, you guessed it, 55% fructose. This final type is the one most commonly used as a sweetener in U.S. soft drinks. Just a few months after its creation, high fructose corn syrup was making its way into food products, ranging from packaged bread, cookies, cake, ketchup, salad dressings, and soft drinks. But both its conception and its popularity are far from coincidental. By 1971, sugar prices were soaring as worldwide production of sugar fell below worldwide sugar consumption levels, and in 1974, poor weather conditions led to a reduction of nearly 30% of Europe's beet sugar crop. Nations like the Soviet Union switched from exporting sugar to importing it as their crops failed. Sugar began to be sourced primarily from places like the Philippines and Peru. Soon, however, even these countries began suspending their sugar exports in an effort to stabilize their own supply situations, which were also dwindling. Making things even worse, the United States Sugar Act of 1934, which helped to regulate tariffs on raw and refined sugar imports, expired on December 31, 1976, raising sugar prices even further. It seemed like the United States' increasing demand for sweet sugary products was forcing them into a corner. They either overspend on foreign sugar or develop a new American source sweetener. Now we have to go back to the 1920s to talk about corn. Since the 20s, the American government has provided farmers in the United States with numerous support programs and crop subsidies, ensuring stable prices for crops and aiding farmers to maintain a reliable and affordable food supply. Crops that are versatile and easily maintained like soybeans, wheat, and especially corn were receiving subsidies even before the Great Depression. The demand for sweeteners and the sky-high production of corn in the mid-1970s created the perfect opportunity to utilize the new process Marshall and Cui had created, in place of the more expensive cane and beet sugar. By 1975, high fructose corn syrup became the main sweetening agent in soft drinks across American companies like Coca-Cola, who originally sweetened their drinks with cane sugar. Between 1970 and 1990, high fructose corn syrup consumption increased 1,000% in the United States. Because the prices of staples like corn remain so low, the prices of high fructose corn syrup were lower as well, bringing down the overall cost of production for the processed foods and allowing companies to make more money and the consumers to save money. This trend continued to this day, with high fructose corn syrup being the cheapest and most efficient way to make foods taste good, and the foods that taste the best are often the ones that tend to be the most consumed. At first, it appeared as though the United States had found a way to make the tasty foods and drinks they craved without breaking the bank, but soon it would come to light how dangerously unhealthy these foods were, and how low-income, at-risk communities were being harmed the worst. A pattern emerged in the United States that showed a correlation linking poor nutrition practices to lower income families. Simply put, the healthier foods were far more expensive than the ones with little nutritional value. In the late 1990s and the early 2000s, many Americans started to care more about the nutritional content of the food they were consuming. 
the Corn Refiners Association jumped on the health concerns of consumers, putting out advertisements and commercials claiming that high fructose corn syrup was as natural of an ingredient as sugar, and implying that it had no negative health effects. In 2010, the Corn Refiners Association even tried to change the name high fructose corn syrup to just corn sugar, due to high fructose corn syrup's increasingly negative reputation. But in 2012, the Food and Drug Administration rejected the name change. It was also found in 1978 that honeybees were attracted to high fructose corn syrup. This was discovered when workers at high fructose corn syrup plants noticed that honeybees clustered and fed on high fructose corn syrup spills during the loading of product into shipping containers. It was turned into a sucrose alternative for the honeybees, being used as food for them to promote brood production in the spring for commercial pollination. It is also used to feed honeybees when sources of pollen and nectar are scarce. However, when temperatures exceed 113 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius, it begins to form a compound that is toxic to bees. This toxicity presents itself in the form of dysentery-like symptoms in the bees. The use of high fructose corn syrup in feeding bee colonies is being looked at as a potential cause of CCD or colony collapse disorder, where entire colonies die off in short succession. Today, high fructose corn syrup has replaced sugar in a variety of uses, ranging far beyond just soda, including the beverage industry, processed food manufacturers, cereal and bakery producers, multiple use food manufacturers, the dairy industry, and the confectionery industry. That means certain pastries, biscuits, breads, cookies, shortcakes, soft drinks, juice drinks, carbonated drinks, jams, jellies, ice creams, flavored milks, eggnogs, yogurts, frozen desserts, canned foods, sauces, condiments, cereals, granola bars, and many others can contain high fructose corn syrup. The majority of highly processed foods in the U.S. contain some level of high fructose corn syrup. All this to say, its use is still very widespread. Consumption rates peaked in 1999 in the United States at 37.5 pounds per person throughout the year. By 2012, that number was down to 27.1 pounds per person, but that's not to say that that is at a healthy rate by any means. Okay, so here's the creation process with all the complicated names, so bear with me. High fructose corn syrup is produced from corn that was milled into cornstarch. Then using chemicals of caustic soda and hydrochloric acid and enzymes alpha amylase and glucoamylase to hydrolyze the cornstarch into corn syrup containing mostly glucose and a third enzyme called glucoisomerase to isomerize glucose in the corn syrup to fructose, leaving us with high fructose corn syrup. When looking at health effects of high fructose corn syrup, it's important to note that too much added sugar of all kinds can contribute to health problems such as weight gain, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and high triglyceride levels, all of which boosts risk of heart disease. It's estimated that now people consume over 500 calories per day from sugar, an increase of 300% from 50 years ago. This problem is amplified by the fact that added sugars like high fructose corn syrup are considered empty calories. This means that you are consuming calories that offer no essential nutrients. The more of your diet you take in these empty calories, the less room you have for what your body actually needs. Not to mention that some studies have found that consuming high fructose corn syrup does not register in your body as eating food and filling up. And some go as far to say that consuming high fructose corn syrup will even increase your appetite making you crave more food, which can lead to further health issues. But just because there are a lot of foods and beverages that have high fructose corn syrup doesn't spell doom for everyone. There are many food items that still use better, healthier ingredients. Look for alternatives where you shop for food. The ingredients label will say whether there is any high fructose corn syrup contained within. By spreading awareness and actively working to eat healthier, we can reach a healthier future together. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.